OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. Um, enjoying the sunny weather might sound more appealing, but congratulations to you. You made the choice to develop your skills. Um, as you know, my name is Monica Espinosa, and I am a proud ESL instructor at Torrance Adult School, where I, where I have wonderful colleagues, many of whom are here today. So um, today, uh, you know, in the past, in the past webinars, I've showed you how to I've shown you how to create a Google Forms quiz. Um, we've learned about settings and types of questions that you can do. In part two, you learned about <clears throat> you learned about sharing the Google form using hyperlinks. Uh, you are sorry, hyperlinks, a uh, shortened URLs and QR codes. And today, you will be working with the responses. You know, today it's going to be a little less hands-on than than what we've done in the past, um, but it's still lots and lots of learning. So you know, today you're going to view your responses on a Google form, and I'm going to show you how to add feedback for the user, um, how to add feedback for all of the users, and personal feedback for each individual. I'll show you how to release a student's scores, and what that means is just sending, sending the student their score, the student or whoever your user is. And uh, lastly, I will show you how to create a spreadsheet for you to be able to view all of the responses to your Google form. Now, later, uh, if once you, once you, uh, if you'd like to view the slides for this presentation, I have hyperlinked uh, the Google slides for the previous presentations on the bottom right. All right, so. Today, yes, you will take another quiz, but first I wanted to share my, what my quiz settings are for the particular quiz that you are going to take today, all right? If you need a settings refresher, that is something that we covered in webinar in the first part, uh, and later you, you can click here on the settings refresher link, and that will take you to the presentation that has information regarding settings on Google Forms, okay? So the first thing that I want to show you is the box on the top right. And if you notice, I have my box checked that asks for email addresses. So today, for today's quiz, I'm going to ask you to type in your email address. Now, make sure that you type it in correctly, okay? Um, it must be correct in order for you to be to receive your score, okay? Um, now, let's just, I, I just want to correct something that I've said in the past, which is that <clears throat> you will, that the user is required to have a Gmail address. And you know what? That's what happens when you make assumptions, right? I just uh, took, took my students' word when they said they couldn't, they needed to log on, they needed to log on and well, they had a Gmail address, so they had to type in their Gmail address. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't automatically mean that you have to sign in to your Gmail, okay? So today, you do not, you do not, do not have to sign in to your Gmail uh, for the activity that you will do today, okay? Um, it's just any email address, any valid email address, okay? But it does not need to be Gmail for this particular uh, setting okay now uh, one of the other settings in my quiz is that I have chosen later after manual review and what this means is that you will take the quiz and then I have to go and look at my and look at the responses uh, maybe I can add some individual feedback to your responses maybe I could even add points to your quiz or take away points um, from, from what you submitted. And then after that, 
I will release uh, your score. And from that, at that point, you will receive an email. Now, I want you to, sh I want to show you what I didn't do. Okay. So here I did not, I did not select this box limit to one response. Uh, now this particular box will require you to sign into Google. Okay. And I just wanted to show you, I just wanted to point this out because we, we do not need to sign into Google. And so this, this goes against what I have said previously. So I just wanted to clarify that and bring the truth, uh, bring the facts to the table. Okay. So um, there you go. Now a little QR code reminder. If you feel like using your newly learned skill, you can use that today. Um, but the link will also be shared with you uh, through the chat box. So in case you need to remember, you know, if you'd like to <clears throat> grab your smartphone or your tablet, uh, for in order to use your QR code, all you need to do is open the camera app on your phone and then just point the camera to your QR code. Once you are prompted uh, for, you know, if if your phone asks you for permission, just go ahead and answer in the affirmative. Or maybe your phone asks you to click here if you'd like to be redirected to the content. Depending on your phone and the, and the version of the update that you have on your phone, it might look a little differently. All right, so I hope I'm going to give you a few moments to grab your phone. Once again, you do not have to do it on your phone you will have the option to also do it directly on your computer. I just wanted to uh, you know, give you the opportunity to use the, a QR code in case this is a newly learned skill from last week. All right, so here you go. If you need me to explain that to you again, uh, let me know. So go ahead, I'll give you four minutes. So now you have taken, you know, now you've sent out the, the Google form <clears throat> to your users, whether they be student, your staff, or parents, whoever, and now they have responded to your Google form, right? So you, as the creator of the Google form, you have your setting options at the top, and then you have these two tabs. You have the questions tab, which is where you edit your Google form. And then you have your responses tab, which is where you will be able to uh, view all of the responses to your Google form, okay? So first of all, let me talk to you about what you see here at the top, okay? Okay, so right now, we are, let's imagine that we are on the responses tab. All right, so I am going to go um, in order. So on number one, you see that little green square with the uh, white lines across it. So that is the icon that I will, will click on if I would like to generate a spreadsheet of the responses to this form, okay? In number two, I have a vertical menu and this vertical menu offers me <clears throat> the opportunity to receive email notifications when there are new responses. Now, personally, I, uh, I don't recommend it if you're sending it out to a large number of people because then your inbox is going to be flooded, is going to be flooded with email notifications about so-and-so who just submitted a response and then more, you know, it, it gets, might get a little overwhelming in your inbox. So you decide. Um, in number three, you can toggle this option and uh, it just, once you, right now, for example, on this form, if you see it, it's in color, I am accepting responses to this Google form. Now, if I were to, if I were to click on it, it will turn gray and that means that the user will no longer be able to access this form. So, uh, for example, if you're setting a, if you are setting a deadline, right? Uh, it personally, in my in my classes, uh, you know, 
I ask for a deadline, let's say Friday at two o'clock and 20 people have submitted responses through this Google form. And at that point, you know, I grade those 20 responses and then I'm not going to check this Google form anymore. I'm done with it. You know, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to go back and grade more. So I'm going to toggle this option and I'm going to lock it essentially. And um, I will not allow any more responses. Then it's your choice if you want to momentarily open it for somebody else to submit a response. All right. And now in number four, I'd like to, for you to observe the three different views. These are three different tabs uh, for the responses page. You've got a summary view, a question view. So in the question view, you will be able to see all of the responses to one particular question at a time. And then you are going to have the individual view. So right now, if you can see uh, on my page, on, on the image that I have here on this slide, the individual tab is selected. You see that it's kind of like in yellowish. And so I'm, I will see um, each person's submission, all right, one by one. Now, number five is a drop down menu. And if you click this drop down menu, you can um, go to a particular person's response. Okay. Uh, number six is you can click on these arrows left or right, and it will take you to the next or the previous response. Number seven, uh, you can print this, this particular response. You can print it here, or in number two, you have the option. Uh, that menu will give you the option to print out all responses, but I don't know if you want to go there. Uh, and number eight, deletes this particular response, okay? Uh, so whatever you are viewing, you, you will delete this response. Fortunately, Google has a little reminder for you when you click that, and it just tells you, warning, this action cannot be undone. So be very careful when you, when you do this. Uh, if you accidentally click it, you know, then, and you need a particular person's response, then you would have to contact them and say, could you please, please fill out this form once again. All right. So in reviewing my responses, okay, so these are, these are some things that I would do once I am reviewing a particular person's response. So let me just show you let me just show you what that looks like before i go into this okay so here you go i have my responses this is my demo okay so this is not necessarily what you all just submitted all right so here i i am on the individual okay there you go I am in the individual view. Now I am viewing the submission that student Billie Jean submitted, okay? Now here I can view what she, what questions she missed and what questions she uh, got correct. Now here you have the option to either add more points or maybe give less points if you'd like. Okay, so let me show you what that, what that is. Now, if you notice, when I made changes, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, this little window popped up and it prompts me to uh, discard or save my edits. Uh, so please make sure that you, are, you save. I, one thing that I like to do, you know, especially with a form like this that has many questions, is I make my edits whatever edits I have to make, and I save at the end, you know, I save in the middle, and then I save at the end, because uh, watch what happens. So let's say I made some changes here. Now I click save, and it takes me back up to the top. So for me, it's just a, a little annoying that every time you click, you know, I'm at the bottom of the page, and then I have to click save, 
and it takes me back to the top of the page. I don't want to be doing that. So I just save it. If I'm, if I'm reviewing a response, I hit the save button, you know, kind of like in the middle of the page. And then of course, at the end of the page, but please, 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 please make sure that you save your work. Uh, okay. Oh, one more thing. Okay. So regarding feedback, regarding feedback. Now, there is some feedback that I, that I would like everyone to see, okay? Now, in previous forms, um, I believe that you were able to see that when you viewed your score. Now, this time it's going to be a little different. If you remember from my settings, I selected later for manual review. So that means that you won't be able to see all of this feedback until after I released uh, your score, okay? Now, if you notice uh, on the top right in the image, uh, it says feedback. So feedback, this particular feedback, everyone will be able to view this feedback. So any person who submits a form and then uh, re you know, receives a score, they will be able to see this feedback. However, if you add individual feedback, this will only appear, add individual feedback will only, only appear in the responses tab, okay? Uh, because you are viewing, you know, individual, a person's particular response. Uh, again, please do not forget to save. And when you have this option selected later for manual review, only with that setting option will you see this uh, box at the top of, I'm sorry, at the top of your responses, responses tab. And if you notice, there's a little lock on the left and it says score not released. And that means that I have not sent an email to my student, Billie Jean, uh, with her score. So you would have to click on the button on the right uh, to release score, and then that will take you to another window where you can uh, send them an email with your score. Now, let me go back to show, and I will show you how to add feedback, feedback for everyone, okay? So I am here on my, let's go to the quiz that you just took. 62 responses, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so how do I add feedback so that everyone will receive it, okay? Now, you might want to do this when, you know, imagine that 75% of your users uh, got this question wrong and so you just want to send a refresher out to everyone okay so if i am on my question on a particular question for example last name okay uh, let's do let's do a different one right here okay so now i'm in, i'm in edit mode as you can see I'm editing my Google form, and now I have the answer key. I will click on the answer key. I hope you got that right. Um, so I will click on add answer feedback, and I am I here is where I will add uh, feedback for everyone to see once again. All right, so here you can add feedback for answers that are incorrect or answer that answers that are correct. So I want to send them a little refresher, you know, for the students who, who get this question in, uh, wrong. I, I want to make sure that they, that they watch a video or read something. I can refer them to the material where they can review and uh, then I can reassess their knowledge. So let's imagine that, that I want to I want to direct them to this informational video about fees, okay? Uh, so all I would do is I would copy the link. I would copy the link to this video. 
uh, I will show you once again, okay? Uh, I, will, I will copy the link either from the address bar or from the share arrow. And what I would do is I would, I can either enter it here or I can add the, a link here. Now this is a video, so I also have the option to just add a video, okay? But e either, either way, if it's a link, it, it'll work, okay? So if it's a video, you can choose either option. So the text, I would say, please watch this video one more time for review, okay? and I will link and make sure to add and save. So now when my student receives their score, when they receive their score from me and they, they, uh, you know, they've got this question wrong, then this feedback will show up, will show up for them, okay? So let me show you how I did that one more time. Okay, so I am, I would go to any question that I have on my Google form, okay? Any question that I have on my Google form, and I would find this option through the answer key. Oh, I already have feedback there. Okay, uh, let's see, right here. Okay, so once again, answer key. Add answer feedback. Okay, and for let's do this one. All right, so the students they need a refresher on what is a hyperlink. So I want to make sure that that they watch this video as a reminder. Let's see, try again, we'll text. Please watch this video one more time for review. Okay, I will add. And if you'd like to add any feedback for correct answers, then you can just toggle over and let's see, great job. Make sure to save. And now in your edit mode, your edit mode for your Google form, you will be able to view any feedback that you have, that you have added. And remember, when it says feedback just by itself, that means that all people who receive their score will be able to see your feedback, okay? All right, how are we doing, Anthony? Do I need to, uh, show that to them one more time or, or may I move on? Um, let's, there are a couple questions. Okay. Um, so on the feedback, mm -hmm. one question is what if you add answer feedback prior to sending the form? So you, you can't do that. So do, if the per, uh, for example, because you want them to watch a video, what is that? I wonder if that's kind of what the person is hinting at. I, th I think maybe the question is because you are showing us how to add the feedback right now after mm -hmm. students have already, or after folks have already taken the quiz. Right. But you can also do this prior to sending out the form, right? Oh, yes, most definitely. And, um, you know, in the quizzes that you've done in the past, if, if for the people who have participated in the past, if you remember, uh, you were able to view your score right after, right after um, you finished, after, right after you submitted your Google form. And, you know, at, at, in that part, with those settings, with those settings, you would be able to see the feedback right after. You know, right now, I am adding feedback um, based on, based on this, what I see, you know, based on the results that I see. 
uh, for this person. But yes, you can add feedback before. However, uh, they, will, they will not be able to see your feedback until after you release their score. If, 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 if in your settings for the form, you have selected immediately after each submission, then any feedback that you add would be visible to them right after they submit their Google form. All right. Great, and in, Monica. Oh. Okay. And in that, in let me just add that if you have that option immediately after each submission and uh, the person views the feedback, unfortunately, with this particular setting, with immediately after each submission, you will not be allowed to add individual feedback because um, you won't have an email address to mail it back to them, okay? Uh, so just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that immediately after each submission will not allow you to add individual feedback. Just keep that in mind. All right, we're good to go? Um, a couple more questions, Monica. One, there's a question, how do you do feedback to all? So that is the way, exactly. What I have shown you, what I have shown you, that is the way to add feedback to all, okay? That's exactly how, and let me just show you one more time, okay? You would, once again, you are in edit mode. You are in edit mode, and because this is a quiz, you are, you have the option to add an answer key and add feedback. So I'm in edit mode for my Google form. I would select the answer key. I would add answer feedback. And I can say, you know, I could either just type my feedback or I could add links or video to my feedback. So for a correct answer, I would say something like, for, you did great. And an incorrect answer, I could say something like, read, read the article again, right? And I can, if it's an article that you want to point them to, uh, a web page, a video, uh, whatever it is that you would like for them to review again, or maybe you want to say something like, uh, I don't know, you get an A for effort or whatever, whatever it is that you want to tell uh, the person who got this answer incorrect, okay? So once again, let me just show you how I would add, how I would add a, a video, for example. I would just, um, I would need the link to this video. So I am going to copy and paste it from the address bar. I can do it, I can copy and paste the address from the address bar, or I can take the address from the share. We will share arrow, and I would copy. And I'm here. Okay, so now I am linking it to this video. Watch this again, for example. I'd add it and now it appears like this and so this feedback uh, only the people who who got this answer incorrect only they would see that you know if they were to get if they got this answer correct then what they would see is you did great okay all right so this this what I am doing right now feedback um, this is what general feedback. This is what everyone is going to see. So the opposite would be individual feedback, which is what I'm going to go into next. All right, Mon Anthony. Yeah. So Monica, um, we got a little clarification on the question. If it's, if it happens that you want to send the same feedback to everybody. Yes. Not... That's ex yeah. This is the way. Okay. So you'd have to put mm -hmm. the same thing in the correct as you would put in the incorrect. Right, exactly so. And I do this, and I do this in my questions tab, okay? So any feedback, and it, I guess, it, you know, it could be a little confusing if, if you're new to the terms because feedback 
versus individual feedback, um, you know, I guess it's not very clear, right? Just keep in mind that when you, it will say add individual feedback, and that means that it's individual feedback for the form, the particular response that you are reading at the moment. Whereas in my edit mode, in my questions, I will only see, I will only see the option for, I would only see the option for feedback. Okay, let me delete that. So here you go. And this feedback that you, that you add here, this is going to be visible to everyone, right? Uh, here you go. And depending on your question type, on your question type, if you see here, it doesn't say correct or incorrect because the reason for that is that be, because this question is not multiple choice, okay? Or it's not a checkbox. So that is why it doesn't say correct or incorrect. That's, that's why. All right, are we good? Um, are you, you're gonna talk about releasing scores later, is that correct? Most definitely, yes. Okay, so we'll hold off on that question. There's one other question. Um, are you gonna talk about any more about the points, assigning points to questions, and if you wanna edit that? The question just about the points is when you make edits to the points, is it for the individual test? or for all of them? And I'm not sure what them is, but. Okay, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to, for, you know, let's, let's go back to my questions tab. I'll, sh I'll show them both. All right, so now I've created this form, and at this point, you know, three people have already filled it out, right? Three people have already filled it out um, as this form is. Now, if I wanted to go back and assign, Let's say, let's make this question. It's currently uh, worth two points, but you know what? Now it's just such a great question that I'm just going to make it 10 points, okay? So there you go. I can change it. That's, that is how I would change it. And now, however, you have to keep in mind, you have to keep in mind that this person right here, Billy Jean. So I'm looking at individual responses and I'm looking at student Billy Jean's submission. And I am going to go back to that question. Now, this person, they didn't type, you know, the name is not correct. So, you know, the only thing is they, they didn't write it with a capital letter. So maybe I'll give them some points for it. And I would just go up to add points or down to take away. So I'm going to give them half credit for that. So this is how I would add points. I can add points, uh, I'm sorry, I can change the value of a question, the point value of a question after I have done it in my, in my edit version of my Google form, if that makes sense. So here I see that this person they got this question wrong, uh, but but I, you know I can still make the the choice to give them points or or not or not. So that is how I would change the point value to the form to the form itself or to the individual response. Okay, so the point values can change at, at any time. I hope that clarifies it for you. Yeah, Monica, I, I believe so. You, you're saying that the, the way that you have to do it is you have to go to the individual questions and adjust the points that that's way? Yep, that's exactly okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, yes. because it's not the form. The form, unfortunately, uh, when you create a form, you can't make the entire form you know, worth 20 points. No, it, it doesn't, you know, on Google Forms, it doesn't work that way. You have to assign points to each question. So that is how you would have to go individually to each question and assign the points that you would like. All right. Perfect. Oh, so Monica, yeah. I think we're good on the questions if you want to continue. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back to, to the response. Okay. And I will, 
I will show you how to add individual feedback. Um, I just want to show you, uh, well, actually, no. let, me, let me go back to, to this. All right, so right here, I've got, let's go back to Billie Jean, right? And I see that right now, it tells me that what she, with what she submitted, her current score is 25 points out of 44 possible points. Her score has not been sent to her. Okay, her score has not been sent to her. I am going to review this form. And once I am done reviewing, I will release score. And I'm gonna walk you through that. Okay, so I'm, here I am reviewing the score. Okay, I see her last name, Jean, and her first name. I don't wanna make you dizzy as I scroll. Okay, so I see the presenter's name. Yes, and this person uh, typed in Monica with a lowercase m. So, you know, just going to give them five points for that. If you take a look at the bottom of my screen now, that little window popped up prompting me to save. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on that. It's your, it's your decision to hit save every time or, or not, but I, I'm just not going to hit save right now, okay? All right, so this question is also wrong. If I felt bad or if I had a change of heart or if I wanted to accept this answer, I could, I could add points, but in this case, I am not. It is a fat zero. I wonder how many people got this incorrect, you know, were fooled by the ELS and the ESL. Um, okay, so this, this is correct. I have assigned it as two points. Uh, so I'm going to give it two points. This was correct. And if you see here, this is the feedback that Billie Jean is going to see when she receives her score. Or in your case, what you are going to see once I release your scores. Okay. Now here, you were, so, I'm sorry, the students were supposed to mark all that apply, right? So this is incorrect and they only got this one. So, you know, if I felt like they deserved it, then maybe I would give them one point. That would be up to you, right? So this was correct. Two points. So this is when you when you learn, uh, you know, how much work you want to put into your Google form, because if it's a really long form, you've know, got lots of questions, then you know it's going to take you it's going to take you a minute to find your your rhythm and go through all of the questions to review. Um, all right, that's correct. This is a general feedback. And now if you see here, if you see here, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't point it out in the previous questions. Uh, I, am, I am looking at Billie Jean's response right now. So now I have the option to add individual feedback. Okay, um, did she get this question right? Yes, she did. Okay. So I can add individual feedback and I will just add to it to what I already have and I'll say you did great. All right. And you know when you add individual feedback, uh, especially right now uh, in our online learning setting, it's definitely a more personal touch. Normally when it's pen to paper, you know, we're able to uh, circle, star, make arrows, and write, uh, you know, comments, personal comments to our students. So I found this um, add individual feedback a very necessary part of creating an online presence and building rapport with your students as, you know, they, as you both go through the online learning experience, 
because this is one way for you to connect directly to this one on one student. You know, maybe you don't have as much time to, you know, in your virtual meetings to say, hey, Anthony, you did you did a great job on your homework or your your essay was great. Uh, so adding individual feedback definitely gives you a personal touch and just one way to connect with the student personally. All right. So I highly recommend that you give you add individual feedback to at least one of the questions on your Google form. Uh, I believe that it really helps you connect with the student and and add that positive reinforcement. Okay. Or encouragement. Yes. Okay. Whoa. Two. Okay. This was wrong. Okay. Zero. Now here, I'm going to point them to to a resource. Right. I'm going to add individual feedback. And if you see, it's the same type of window as adding general feedback. However, however, uh, I wish Google was a little more clear on this because it just says add feedback. However, I have clicked add individual feedback. So only my student Billy Jean will be able to see will be able to see this feedback. So I want to point Billy Jean to this video. And I will go to, I will take the link for this video. I will copy it. And I am, sorry, where was I? Here you go. Um, I will paste it. I can either paste it into this, into this field or I can add the link here, right? And right here, enter feedback and the text to display the text to display will be for your hyperlink, okay? So let me show you. Add. So if you see the text for the hyperlink is right here, it says hello. And my feedback is watch again. That's just an example, not the best, but there you go, I will save. And now, Billie Jean, when she receives her score, she will be able to see this, okay? How are we doing on, on questions? Uh, Monica, I think we're good. Um, I just wanna put this one question out there for you. You can answer it now or later. So if you set um, all of this up ahead of time, if you set up the questions, the feedback, show answers, et cetera, before you set on, send out the form, could it be automatically graded and also give appropriate feedback to the appropriate students? Yes. So as I did in previous, you know, for the forms that that, that the participants filled out in the in uh, part one and part two of the series, I added the feedback beforehand. And once they were, you know, it just depends on the type of question that that you select, right? So, for example, this is a multiple choice question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you have the option for feedback. Now, if you select in your settings, once again, if you select the later for manual review, this is where this that's that's where that's where the sorry that's how the student would be able to access their score and the feedback directly through you selecting immediately after each submission, right? Otherwise, if you select later after manual review, you are going to have to go through this process that I am showing you right now. You know, if I've added the feedback already, Anthony, and I'm not even going to look at these people's forms, you know, these people's responses, they're all multiple choice questions. I don't, I don't need to know. Right, so then I could just go ahead and release. Then I could just go ahead and, and release and release scores, and I don't even have to view responses. If these, you know, if I previously added the feedback, um, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it sounds good. Yes. Thanks, okay. Okay. Sorry, I got carried away there. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry if I didn't answer it very clearly. Okay. 
All right, so we are with Billie Jean, okay? Now, there you go. Oh, two points. Two points. Now, let's see, I'm ready, I'm done. I've reviewed, oh, actually, here you are. The last one. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. All right, so if you notice, the last question was a, was a written question. And that, um, you would have to individually go to any written question and, you know, assign points based on how well you think the, the student wrote. Uh, so here, you know, the student submitted lowercase, the teacher speaking. So this is where you would add individual feedback and maybe uh, what I like to do when I'm doing this is I, I copy, I copy it and then I say, you know, the teacher speaking and then maybe something like my corrections and I would say like the teacher is speaking, okay? Uh, so I recommend that in your Google Forms where you where you make the choice later for manual review, my recommendation to you is that you do not ask for lengthy responses, but that's just my personal choice because I don't want to have to read uh, 10 paragraphs and have to edit like 10 paragraphs in a Google form. Um, I, I would definitely not recommend that, you know, that, that, that could be very time consuming, you know, so maybe, maybe keep uh, your questions to a shorter response, maybe just two or three questions where you ask for written responses or maybe one, only one lengthy response. That's just something that I've learned over, over my, my time using Google Forms, okay? So now I have looked at that and I say to myself, well, you know, it doesn't have a period, it's lowercase, there's a grammar, there's grammar mistakes. So I'm only going to give the student one point, you know, one point, or if you're feeling kind, two points, okay? Now I have to make sure I save, make sure that I save. And now if you notice, Billie Jean's score has gone up. Now she has 28 points out of 44. I have reviewed her, her responses and now I'm ready to send her her score. I would now go to a little button that says release score and check, make sure that the correct box is checked. And then I would send emails and release. And now Billie Jean is going to receive an email where she would be able to access uh, her score, her score. And I'm going to show you that next. All right, send emails and release. Now this is where it matters that the students or your user types in their email correctly. Because if they do not type it in correctly, then the email goes into cyberspace and uh, you will probably get an error message uh, if you weren't able to deliver the email to said person. Okay, so in that case, then maybe you know the student would reach out to you and say, "Hey, I haven't gotten my score," or you know you would have to communicate with the student or the person and let them know what their score is. So just please ask them and yourself as well uh, to double check, double check your your email address when you, when you are typing it in. Um, so there you go. And now I have sent Billie Jean an email and she will receive this. All right, so Billie Jean is going to receive an email and it will contain this, okay? It will give her her score and then she will have to click on view 
she'll click on view and it will open a new window. I'm sorry, a new tab. It will open a new tab and it will show her the form and all of the questions she missed, the points that she received for each question, as well as any feedback that you, I'm sorry, that any feedback that I added, both general and um, individual. When the student sees the feedback, they don't, they just see feedback. They don't see like, oh, this is for you individually or just for everyone, okay? They just see feedback. Um, all right, so am I, am I okay, Anthony? Um, Monica, let me just ask this one question. Um, okay, so imagine, so remember when we were, when we were using paper all the way back, you know, back in the day. All the so, way back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, as a teacher at the very top of the test or the quiz you're returning, you might write some general comments, right? You know, mm -hmm. great job or put a star or, or other kind of sticker on it or whatever. Yes. So is there an equivalent in a Google form? Is there some way to do that kind of an action on someone's returned form? Uh, or, so no, so no, there is not. However, what I do, what I do, Anthony, is um, I just go to the, I just choose the first, you know, the first question, which is their last name. You know, I add individual feedback there. That's how I, that's how, I, that's the way that I have addressed that in okay. my, in my use of Google Forms. So here I would say, you know, you did, you did a great job. Um, Oh, and Anthony, one thing that I do here, you know, I, I always try to add something, a personal touch to a Google form, right? So this is my student, Billy Jean, right? So I would say something like, Billy, you did great. And I would just maybe add a little more to that message, right? But I always try to make it personal. And uh, in the my general comments to the student, I always use their name because that is maybe that that's something that we would do face to face or something that we would do uh, on paper way back when. Okay, so that's how I address it. Great, that's a very uh, creative response. Mm -hmm. We do have yes. a couple questions, more questions about releasing scores, but if you want to continue and then we can circle back to those questions. Uh, or do you want to get those questions? How about yeah, let's, let's do the questions now. Okay, when the scores are released, uh, do they have to be released individually or one at a time? No, uh, they can individually or one at a time. So, I mean, like individually or all at once, you mean? Um, yeah, the question is, do they have to be released individually or one at a time? It sounds like that's the same thing. Like what yeah. are your what are your options yeah, what in terms of options? Right? Yeah, what are your options in terms of releasing the scores? Let's start, right. let's start so, with that question. Okay, so you have two options. You can release everyone's score all at once, which is what I'm going to do with your scores, or you can release each person's score after you review their response or or at any time. So it could be individually or all, all at once. However, um, once you review a person's response, if you make any changes to it, make sure that they are saved, okay? Make sure that they are saved. And then once you click on release score, if you see, um, I have the option for all respondents or, or just her, Billie Jean. So um, this is how I would release it all at once, right? And you can, yeah. And this is the email that I showed that I showed you. This is what they will see, right? So uh, please click on view to see my comments and your your points. Okay. So by by clicking all respondents, this is how I would release the score all at once. Okay, and that's very convenient. All right, other questions regarding releasing scores? 
Uh, yes, we have a bunch of questions that have now shown up. Okay. So, okay, let's go to this question, Leslie. If you release scores and then later change the possible points or add more feedback, does it automatically update the changes for the student's feedback? And yeah. so meaning when the student clicks on the link um, from the email that comes after the scores are released. Okay, so I just did that right now, right? I'm editing and saved. And if you notice, if you notice right here, it says updates made after release. Unfortunately, they will not see that. So I, yeah, that, that's the short answer to your question. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another question. Can you release the score only without the view option to see the quiz again with their answers? Uh, let me double check in the settings. Let's see what uh, options are. Okay. So here you go. Um, let's go to quizzes. Now in your settings, in your settings on the quizzes tab right here, the last, the last section is about what respondents can see. So if you don't want them to see those things, make sure that these are not checked. All right. And you would save your settings and, and that's how you would do that. More questions? Yeah, a couple more. Um, okay, so one, another question, does the score only show the number correct out of the total? For example, you showed us like the 14 out of 36 with the one student, mm -hmm. or can it show in a percentage, you know, if that's the way that um, teachers are sharing their scores, with, you know, sharing the feedback with students? Oh, no, it only shows the, the, I'm sorry, it only shows the, the score, the 14 out of 30. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to do that, you know, if you wanted to share the percentage only, if you wanted to share the percentage only, then maybe you could add individual feedback. You could add individual feedback and you can say, all right, for example, 75%. Okay. Now, what you would have to do, what you would have to do is you would have to make sure that your settings in quizzes, uh, that you uncheck, you uncheck those boxes. If you don't want them to see that, if you only want them to see, um, oh no, you know what? I'm not sure if, I've never, I've never been in that situation before, so I don't know if, if by unclicking these, I will also not be, not show them my feedback. It's a good question, one to ponder. I'm sorry that I don't have a, an answer to you for you. So leave that in the parking lot if anyone else can answer that, or just yeah. Okay. Um, another question is, um, if you're sharing the scores for all of your students, um, can everyone see each other's scores? No, they cannot see each other's scores. Now, if, if you, right now, I have my, my, my current settings are later for manual review, right? So in also in your setting options, in your setting options, uh, if you remember when you submitted when you submitted uh, the form, uh, there you have you probably got some options that said edit the submission or view other responses um, or uh, you know sometimes it, it gives you I'm not I'm not sure quite how many links it gives you once you submit your form now right now once again it is later for manual review now if my options were for for my 
users or my students to view their score right after they submit this, there's going to be an option where it says uh, like view a summary, but something like, I don't know the exact wording, okay? But let me show you in the settings uh, right here. Do you see that? Uh, they will see a summary chart of text and responses for other people, okay? But, but right now in my current settings, even though it's checked, you won't be able to see it. That option works for, that option works for immediately, okay? Okay, mm -hmm. and there was one more question. Um, when, <clears throat> sorry, when do respondents see those options that you can check or not? Immediately after submission? So, the option to... I believe that we're talking about those settings options that you were okay. showing us a little bit earlier. Yeah, so once, you know, once you, once a person uh, submits their response, uh, they will be taken to, I believe today you saw something that says like, you know, thank you for submitting this. You will receive your score in two to three days. And right below that message, you're going to see these links that appear and edit your response or view summary. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the word in view summary. View summary, uh, charts, and text responses. That at that point, okay? Only at that point. Um, if they close the window and then try to access it, they won't, they won't be able to access that any longer. All right. Okay. Anything else? And uh, let me see here. Let me answer that one. Um, yes. Um, Okay, what about retaking the quiz? Can they retake the quiz and then have a new score update um, their total responses? All right, so you know what? Thank you so much for reminding me. I, that's one thing that I, that I wanted to, to share with you. All right, so let me go back to uh, right here, my responses. All right, so we're done with Billie Jean. We released Billie Jean's score. Um, now let's go to another student, right? This student, uh, Wow, and I see, oh my goodness, this student got six points out of 44. What is going on? So what I, what I am going to do here is I'm just going to tell my student, Eleanor, you know what, Eleanor, I need you to review this, 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 and this. And what I can do is I can, uh, yes, I can tell her directly, hey, please retake this, or I could make it, very accessible to her and I can copy the link. I can copy the link to this form once again and I can just add it as individual feedback. Please retake this quiz. Maybe I wouldn't say that, you know, but <laughs> with so many exclamation marks. But now when Eleanor receives, receives this, um, at, least, at least, you know, we've made it a little easier for her to just go directly click on the link. You're, essentially what you're doing is you're sending her, you're sending her a link. Now, if a student um, submits another response, it won't update the response that they previously gave. Uh, unless, so, so what you're going to see is you're going to see two submissions from Eleanor, okay? And then you're going to decide, you know, if you want to, you're like, oh, this one's terrible, and then you decide to delete it and only view the other one, then you can do that, okay? Uh, if not, just view the, the response with, you know, after the student has, has taken the, has retaken this quiz, um, so once again, this is, this is how I communicate with the students and tell them like, hey, please retake this. Um, but again, you can all just directly tell them, please uh, retake this quiz. 
if you tell them in an email or you send them a text message uh, or in a virtual meeting, that is how you can ask for them to retake the quiz. That makes sense? I hope. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good, Monica. Um, just a comment um, if you have any thoughts about this. So it's, we're talking about feedback. So it seems that immediate feedback is preferred. Uh, if there is a lot of adding of feedback and adding of links and getting back to the student, is it the same day or days after? Uh, the feedback could be loaded at the time the form is released and perhaps you're holding on for manual grading a text that can be graded quickly. Yeah, That's just you, a comment. Can you read that one more time for me, please? Sure. Again, just a comment. This isn't really a question in there. This is just how this is just Suzanne's uh, perspective. It seems that immediate feedback is preferred. You know, in terms of all the ways that you could give feedback, she's saying that maybe immediate feedback is preferred. Yeah. Um, if there is a lot of adding of feedback and adding of links and getting back to the student, is it the same day or days after? Uh, she's just concerned about that. The feedback could be loaded at the time the form is released and perhaps you are holding for manual grading a text that can be graded quickly. Right. So, so once again, you know, the, uh, you make this feedback accessible to them. With this current setting on my quiz, which the later for manual review, with that current setting, the student will not be able to view the feedback until after you release the score. And so that would be up to you, you know, depending on what your timeline looks, how busy you are, or when it is that you do that. Um, but if you want them to see that immediate feedback that, you know, you're just making general to all students, then you would have to select the option immediately after, after they submit, right? Now, now to, to address the issue of, you know, normally, you know, this form, I, I'm, I added a lot of individual feedback as a demonstration for you. Now, this quiz has a lot of questions, right? And um, if maybe there is just a lot of feedback that I want to add, then honestly, just like my, my general feedback, maybe I just want to add it all in one place and not have to constantly go to each question and add individual feedback to each question, right? So that's another way of, of you just being a little more conscious of your time. You just add it all in, in, one, in one place versus each individual question. If that's one way that you want to do it, that could help out with time. All right. Um, Monica, to circle back to the question you just answered about, um, you know, if you if you have a student and you want the student to retake the quiz because of their, you know, first try, um, can you talk a little bit about what happens to um, the Google Sheet? So, like for example, you said, well, I'm going to allow that the student to do a second try. Mm -hmm. So I delete the you know, then you would go back in manually and delete the first attempt. So what happens on the Google Sheet? Does it also get deleted there as well? Or do you have to go and manually delete it on the sheet? Uh, I believe, uh, so once I, okay, so if I have previous, uh, that gets us into Google Sheets, right? Uh, so now let, let, me, let me go on into that and address that question, Anthony. So now maybe I want to view all of my responses in a Google Sheet, okay? So currently um, this submission by student Eleanor is just terrible. Um, it's just terrible, right? Now I will generate a Google Sheet and I already have it here. Okay, sorry. Here it is. Okay, now, now I have generated this form, right? Now I go back to my, to this form and I delete it. Uh, so no, right now it will not, it will not upload, I'm sorry, it will not automatically update. What you could do, uh, what you could do is just generate a new one. Whoa, sorry. Uh, 
I'm not sure if it will allow you to. Okay, got it. No, apparently the answer is no. So we'll have to just delete it. You know, and obviously uh, when you, when the student submits another form, you know, it's going to show up, it's going to show up here. If you want to, um, it's going to order, order them by, uh, by time, by time of submission, you know, so whoever turns it in first, then that's how it orders it. So if you want to, you know, put all of these under like alphabetical order and then just delete her terrible submission, that's how, that's how you would do it. But apparently, no, it does not. It doesn't update once you've deleted, after you do, first you generate a Google Sheet, you go back, delete the response on the form, but it will not appear as such on the spreadsheet that you have already created. Okay, that answers the question, right, Anthony? I believe so. And Monica, we're mm -hmm. about two minutes away from 2.30. Um, I know. We have, oh, I my know. goodness. We do have one more question in the queue. And then if you want to maybe wrap things up. Um, question is, how do you limit the amount of times a student can take the quiz? Uh, this teacher said she once had a student take the quiz six times. OK. So right now, there's not a way to, to limit that on Google Forms. That's, that's the short answer you would have to one way that you could sidestep that is uh, by by toggling the options on your google form and then just not accept responses anymore but when you click this it just won't accept responses from anyone so there's no way that you can particularly you know block a student from taking it taking this quiz x amount of time times sorry Okay, very good, Monica. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. So um, again, we're one minute from 2.30. So if you want to wrap things up and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, uh, so yes, you know, I, I still feel like I have to share so much more with you. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Google Sheets, but the information is available in my slides. So you can still access that information that I wasn't able to get to. Just some um, my recommendations for you when you have this particular setting is um, I mentioned to please double check their, your email. Uh, you know, I want you to consider the, your answer key. If there's more than one possibility that, more than one answer that you are willing to accept for a particular question, make sure that you add all of that on your answer key. Uh, reminder for the lengthy responses. Yeah, how many of those do you want to correct on your quiz? And Often when students receive an email, you know, I've poured my heart into individual feedback. And then a student sees this email, right? And they just see 14 out of 36. And they're like, ah, oh, that was my score. But then they don't actually click view to view my feedback. Uh, so just remind them that that is, that is um, how they would view all of your feedback. Um, uh, one very quick thing, you know, like once you've got your data, uh, reassign the quiz like what we've already talked about. Um, use the responses for error correction exercises or make a copy of the quiz and send a student that particular copy of the quiz. You know, you can modify some questions or you could only ask them to answer five of the of the original 10 questions. Uh, so that is how you could use, uh, you know, the data that you receive from your responses. I'm sure that we all have wonderful ideas now about how to use Google Forms. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get through, through everything, but I hope that I addressed all of the questions that you had from what we did cover. Uh, I wish you the best in your continued endeavors um, and please i know this is a process so let's be kind to ourselves anthony i think that i am done